there's also a sort of two things going on in your book, right? Which is one is that capitalism has actually been incredibly good at, at driving these innovations forward. It's capitalism that got us to this point. I would say that's not true, but yeah. You would say that's not true? No, I would say it's not true. Okay, go on. I think it's a real, that's a real ideological claim to say that capitalism's got us here. So if you look at uh, rockets, the yep. first rocket to go into space, 1944, not many people know this, it was a V2, modified V2, passes the Kármán line in 1944. The, the, the majority of the US space program, the post-war period was basically the V2 rocket. Werner von Braun works on the Saturn V, the backbone of the Apollo missions. 1944 to 2008, anything that gets past the Kármán line, i.e. space, into space is booked by nation states. The first private business to be able to do that at the fourth attempt was SpaceX in 2008, right? Uh, 50 years after the Soviets. 50 years. People talk about how backward the Soviets were. Yeah. Oh, they couldn't even put bread in, in their s supermarkets. Well, in that particular technology, they were 50 years ahead of any private enterprise. Now, the point is, now space is beginning to become profitable because space-based internet, potential resource extraction, etc. And it's the exact same story we see with the banks in the crisis, right? You socialize the risk, you socialize the losses, you privatize the gains, which is precisely what's happening, for instance, around space. So your question about um, but lots the, innovation, the innovation coming from capitalism, it's not coming from capitalism. It's well, half from, of it, it well, I mean, I suppose- Give me an example. Give me a technology that was developed by market forces. Well, not much of it was de developed by market forces alone, right? But it's it's within the context of, so the mode of production is capitalism that we live in, right? And, that, and, then and the taxes need, are then funding need, the research. Yeah, you need, yep. you need a state but, who can fund yep. primary research, which will then be developed into a yep. consumer product, yep. usually but by capitalism, private firms. But, so look at, the, look at the iPhone, yep. for example. We know that many of the technologies that went into it yep. were from a state. Well, and all the technologies they actually. sort of uh, partnered up yeah. to some extent with businesses who made it into a consumable product yeah. that's a social democratic argument right so that's to say mm. it was mixed market economies with capitalists firms no, no, no. and none of the, entrepreneurial no, no. states to use the words of none of the, none of, the te none of the technologies the jet engine the internet touch screens lithium-ion battery solar cells whatever you, the, the material science that goes into wind turbines none of that has been developed by capitalism capitalism develops things for profit right for returns mm -hmm. now we've had a mode of cap we've had a certain genre of capitalism which is by the way the elite are trying to get rid of which you're absolutely right basically it said the profits of the private sector will pay for amongst other things re r d in in the public sector and that will drive innovation the capitalist class of today no longer even want that no true that's right? a, but that's an anti-neoliberal yeah no, right? but the idea that it's been it's been capitalism that's created those innovations that was what you initially said i would say that, that the idea that we can't have innovation without capitalism is patently incorrect what, so, because so, you, so for example say for example as a thought experiment you're saying about mass, if, creating mass well, let me just finish creating mass consumer technology off the back of it we don't really have a counterfactual to say well we don't we haven't lived in a post-capitalist society well that's what i was going to give you the counterfactual right because i i assumed reading the book that you didn't think we should have had a communist revolution abolishing capitalism in, in 1917 everywhere because then we wouldn't have had this development of the productive forces. Well, we don't know. You might have, you can you can envisage a successful revolution in 1919 in Germany, a very technologically advanced country. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Soviet Union's a, a difficult one because of course it was technologically backwards, etc. Huge country, very under sort of very weak national institutions. So let's say the the revolution in Germany works in 1919. The Weimar Republic uh, never happens, but the social mores, the progressive attitudes are all there in a socialist republic. The technologies that form, you know, inform the, 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 the Nazi project, the Wunderwaffen they, they created towards the end of the Second World War, the jet engines, etc. All that technological practice, the V2, goes into a socialist, a socialist project. Now it's perfectly possible that that socialist country would have had the highest standard of living in the world would have been moving towards all the, and it, it's the first to develop photovoltaic energy it's the first photovoltaic cells rather it's the first to develop the the, the transistor the microprocessor the lithium ion that's perfectly possible we don't have that alternative what we do know is to return to your original point the profit mechanism has not created a single important innovation for 50 years